I'm Donna Sylvester, and this is a story of the gifts that I've gotten from my 25 years living in York. In 1988, I moved to New York from New York City. I had to create a whole new life. Everything familiar was left behind, so I found an empty storefront downtown, and I also made art. I began to see with new eyes. In a nearby scrapyard, I found mounds of beautiful junk metal. I found material and wire that was literally industrial refuse. But I saw something different. I saw possibility. After suffering two miscarriages, I felt bereft. With the found metal, I began interlacing wire to fashion empty vessels, which is how I felt. It was a primal process of weaving metal into new forms. One day while working on this piece, I realized the inside of that space was filled with tiny little root hairs. That space was literally teeming with life. Our daughter was born the following year. In 1993, I sent photos of paintings I was making to friends, one of whom had AIDS, and he remarked, Dee's painting the germs that I'm fighting. So I made a bunch of germ paintings for him. In 1996, so moved by my husband's compassion for the suffering of his chronic pain patients, I began the Root of Pain series. It was my way of honoring their experience and his. In 1998, I returned to working with handmade paper. I fashioned linen pulp into elimination vessels. Open at both ends, they were conduits. I felt they might serve as pathways for something that needed to move through. Since linen pulp is organic matter, it has an expiration date, like milk. Once, I used a spoiled batch, and the pieces were so odiferous, I had to put them outdoors. In the garden, they decomposed beautifully. In 2001, I made the fistules as my response to 9-11. For 10 years, I'd lived very near the World Trade Center. In this piece, I consciously tied all those little bags of sand and gravel as a ritual for peace. Then I needed something black to lay beneath the fistules, so I knit a membrane, 27 feet by 10 feet of stitches. The repetitive action connected me deeply with the dark matter of creation. It felt like prayer. For 10 years, the fistules and the membrane were installed in Lower Manhattan facing east. Clearly, my art practice was moving out of the studio, evolving as evolution to hold intentional space in the world. In 2004, Several artists collaborated with me in a sacred procession to Ground Zero. I cut apart the membrane so that each of us could carry its energy to the site. There, we witnessed an enormous empty vessel. On New Year's Eve 2004, I made a site-specific installation in Cherry Lane. The threshold was a glowing red plexiglass strip embedded in black sand. People could literally step across that threshold into the new year. The threshold also included draping the 11 light posts in Cherry Lane with 20-foot lengths of red fabric. Seamstresses, city workers, knitters, and others collaborated with me in this community project. In 2008, I made porcelain throat vessels, again, open at both ends. 
One day, the shelf collapsed and they shattered into thousands of pieces on the tile floor. After my shock, I saw the shards as seeds of new artwork. I served on Creative York's board for 15 years, supporting art programs for kids and creative endeavors for the entire community. That sign I'm holding asks, what inspires you? Which I think is one of the great taglines of all time. In 2011, my studio practice consisted of utilizing the daily New York Times. Like my own personal I Ching, I looked through every page of the paper every day, seeking images that I needed to include in my collages. Making these collages felt like my impassioned response to world events. I was honoring the strength and beauty of people facing unspeakable obstacles. I named them. At 60, I started keeping secrets. In 2013, I ripped apart painted handmade paper sculpture I'd produced in the 1980s and reconfigured it into new work. Once again, in my life as an artist, destruction opened the door for new creation. Finally, death is an advisor made from razor sharp metal turnings my first months in York and me draped in the membrane among the fistules witnessing the world. I stand in for all of us. As an artist, that's what I do.